So today we saw a partial converse of Thales theorem. And before we go into this, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the sense in which what we're about to see is a converse of Thales theorem. So the proof being shown here, 1.3.8, um, has the statement that if I have two points P and Q, and then those two points determine a line that passes through P and Q, and that line determines a half plane. Well, it really determines two half planes, and so we choose one of them, call it H. Um, and the statement of the theorem says that the set of all points that make a common angle with P and Q forms a circle. So if I have two points, let's call them S and T, and if the angle that S and T make with P and Q are the same, so if we call that angle beta, then if the angle PSQ is beta, and if the angle PTQ is also beta, then, and the conclusion of this theorem, is that there exists a circle. So there exists a circle centered at a point, which we're going to call O, and that that circle contains the points S, T, P, and Q. So that's the sense in which this is a converse, is that Thales' theorem can be thought of, that was 1.3.6, can be thought of as um, circle implies common inscribed angle. Common inscribed angle. So that's kind of how Thales' theorem is, is constructed. Because Thales' theorem says that the inscribed angle is determined by the central angle, the measure of the intercepted arc. And so um, if I have um, two different points that uh, ha both have inscribed angles, but they intercept the same arc, that their angle measure is going to be the same. And this theorem is the converse of that in the sense that having that common inscribed angle implies that those points lie on a circle. So that's why this is a converse to Thales' theorem. Now the proof, as we talked about in class today, um, it's been expanded out a lot here in really helpful ways, and really it's built upon what the author has in the textbook. But the author commits a few sins as, as they relate to the philosophy of our course. The first thing is that he uses a theorem, theorem 2.1.3, to construct this circle in the first place through the points P, Q, and S. So 2.1.3 is a theorem from chapter 2, that, as we'll see, guarantees for us that given any three non-collinear points, we can draw a circle that passes through, a unique circle that passes through those three points. So that theorem 2.1.3 gives us the circle, and by doing so it also gives us the center point O. Right? We don't know that that circle exists until chapter 2, so that part sort of violates our foundational philosophy. We're going to get away with it because the author gets away with it, but it's a little bit of a bummer. Um, the other thing that I don't like particularly about this proof that we talked about is that the author actually ends up using Thales' theorem in a proof of what is supposed to be a converse to Thales' theorem, um, which is a logical flaw in this proof. Uh, we can't use a, a, a theorem to prove its own converse because that would mean that we're using uh, the truth of if P then Q to prove if Q then P which requires us both to show that the theorem applies by showing that P is true, and then also deduce that P is true because of Q is true. So it's a it's circular reasoning to use a theorem to prove its own converse. But because this isn't exactly a converse to Thales' theorem, um, I think the author gets away with it here. With all those caveats aside, let's look at the details of this proof and how it works. So the author constructs the circle using theorem 2.1.3 secretly, um, and therefore we get a circle that passes through the points P, Q, and S, which is a point arbitrarily chosen in the half-plane H. And the next thing that happens is that we consider two different cases. One case where we pick a third point which lies inside the circle. So that's case two up here. We pick a point T that's on the inside of this circle. Uh, and then a third case where we choose the point T to be outside the circle. And we show that in each of those two cases, we respectively either get a bigger angle compared to the, the inscribed angle. We get a bigger than inscribed angle when the point is chosen inside the circle. And respectively, we get a smaller than inscribed angle when the point is outside the circle. 
those two together imply that we will get an equal to inscribed angle um, exactly when that point is on the circumference of the circle itself. And the important ingredient for showing those two claims was the exterior angle theorem, 1.3.5, which says that the exterior angle in any triangle is bigger than either of its opposite interior angles, because in particular, it's equal to the sum of its two opposite interior angles. So, um, in each of these figures, we end up with a triangle, BTQ, sorry, CTQ, so in the figure on the left, there's this triangle, and the angle that we're measuring gamma, uh, that is the angle PTQ, is exterior, and one of its opposite interior angles, according to Thales' theorem, because C lies on the circumference of the circle, this opposite interior angle measures the same as PSQ. So that is beta. And therefore, this exterior angle is bigger than that opposite interior angle, and so we get a bigger than inscribed angle uh, when our point, the vertex, is inside the circle. And then likewise, in the final case over here, the triangle CTQ looks like this. And now our angle that we're interested in the measure of is one of the interior angles of this triangle, and the role of beta, this time, is that beta becomes the exterior angle to which gamma, the angle that we're interested in, is opposite interior. And so, again, by 1.3.5, exterior angles are always bigger than opposite interior angles, and so beta is bigger than gamma in this case. So when our point is inside the circle, it makes a bigger than inscribed angle with P and Q. When our point is outside the circle, it makes a smaller than inscribed angle with P and Q. And that leaves the only case remaining that when our point is on the circle itself, it makes an equal to inscribed angle with P and Q by Thales' theorem.